this computer. Share screen. Good. So, um, we were discussing Vegas algorithm and uh, the last uh, subject was the smoothing of the function. So uh, we evaluated, well, we, are, we were evaluating the projections of the function to all dimensions. Uh, so uh, basically we were implementing, um, uh, we were implementing these function here, basically uh, fx bin of one, fx bin of two and so on, and fx bin of three. And because we did not have uh, so many points yet, uh, this projections fx bin look pretty uh, noisy. So um, here we are, we are printing them fx bin and we see uh, lots of um, noise. Uh, we do see that the, uh, that the, the peaks appear uh, at the edges, at the two edges at the beginning and at the end, but with a lot of noise. So therefore, uh, we said that there are several steps that we want to do. Uh, one is that we want to smoothen the function a little bit. Uh, and the other one, the other one is that we want to transform it a little bit. So the transformation is very simple. Uh, we basically square root uh, of x uh, would do it. Uh, but uh, here we decided to use slightly different um, uh, function, which is very similar to square root of x. Basically, for very small values, it creates values which are which are uh, not that small, and for very big values, it creates values which are not that big. So the kind of damp uh, uh, this um, uh, uh, change of the grid points. So uh, we discussed already this function, and then smoothen is basically a very simple algorithm, which uh, uh, just average ad averages says uh, nearest neighbors nearest neighbors three three nearest neighbors points. So uh, let me show you uh, what I meant with this. So basically, we're doing this: we're taking i i minus one and i plus one and divide by three, and in the edges we divide by two only. Now, um, yeah, and here's this function that we are implementing, this uh, transformation function. Now, uh, how, do we, how do we implement this thing in a vector form uh, in Python? So, um, well, the, this implementation is very easy. So that's what we do. Uh, we take the original, um, uh, the original uh, array, then we shift the array for one bit, uh, for one uh, uh, entry, to the right, we shift this entire array from one entry to the left, and we average we average over all three. Okay, uh, and then we have to for in this range we have to divide the resulting value by one third, and at the edges here we need to divide by one half, and here at the edge we need to divide by one half. Um, why? Because here only two of them contribute, of course, this and this or this and that. And uh, uh, here in the center, of course, all, all three contribute. Now, the only thing that we need to be careful here about is this: is that this uh, this thing uh, uh, is out of the uh, is out of the range, and somehow needs to be properly um, uh, uh, so the limits uh, in the array has to be properly set so that we don't uh read beyond the limits of the array okay so this is done in this uh, in these three lines okay so you see we sh we take fx bin uh and we add it to fx b which is shifted here so up to n bins minus one and then we take the same array fx bin and we shift it for one uh, uh one level to the to the left and we again add to fx b um, and uh, yeah, okay, so first, actually, uh, these are the three lines, sorry, um, I was wrong. So first we, we take, we copy from fx bin directly in of fx b. So this is the first, the first, uh, uh, the first out of three steps. And then we also shift to the left, we shift to the right, and then we multiply with one third 
uh, most of the points and we multiply as the, the edge points with one half, okay? So basically these three lines are shifting left and right. It? So these three lines correspond to this plot here shifting. Uh, well, first we, first we copy the original array, then we shift it to the left, we shift it to the right, and then we multiply with one third and one half. Okay. Now, of course, you could also write the, the do loops, but of course, uh, four loops are always much slower in Python than, uh, uh, than uh, working with in a vector form. Okay. So this is basically vector uh, form um, uh, averaging with the vector form. And then, yeah, these one thirds and one halves is uh, to make sure that we, uh, we have correct norm. And then uh, we also need to normalize the entire function. So uh, normalization is very simple here because we are using a trapezoid rule um, for integration. So um, a trapezoid rule is exact for the function which are step, stepwise constant. Uh, and uh, so then what is the what is the, the the integral the integral is just sum times dh um, but uh, uh, yeah but uh, so the, the normalization that we're, we're interested in here is just one divided by the sum of all um, of, of all the bins okay so therefore we normalize the function and um, uh, then finally, once the function is normalized, uh, we also transform it with this function uh, SM fun, which we which we before vectorized. We vectorize it in VSM fun. So the function SM fun becomes vectorized, and then we use the vectorized function on these these normalized uh, averaged functions. And finally, we write this into the uh, into the uh, final value of the function and we return this final array okay so this is smooth smoothening so once more to repeat what we do here so first we uh, we apply this um, simple uh, yeah first we apply the simple uh, transformation uh, with averaging uh, over three near, nearest network points and then we also apply this transformation uh, r minus one divided by log r. So this is what this part of the code does. Okay, so let me evaluate this. And then uh, here we are. We are now um, uh, using this uh, previous fx bin, the one with which was plotted above here. Uh, we apply the smoothening uh, function that we just created, and uh, the output is going to be stored into int. And we plot this int now, okay? Uh, the zero first and second component. Uh, and uh, well, this is how this one looks like now. Uh, and as you can see, the previous function uh, was extremely noisy. And then the smoothening one, uh, it's still a little bit noisy, of course, uh, but it's much less. So basically this function looks somewhat uh, more useful uh, for con uh, for obtaining new grids than the previous one. So this is what we're going to use. Okay, now we have these functions, which uh, uh, of course are um, uh, are um, piecewise constant. And the question is, how do we get from those functions uh, new grids? Okay, so we have the projections of the function, or basically we have we have those um, uh, we have those fx bins, isn't it? So basically, these projections projections of the function uh, you can think of it as density matrices because in order to get the x uh, uh, the projection to the x variable, we uh, integrate over y and z. To get the y variable, we integrate over x and z, and to get the z value, we integrate over x and y. Okay, so uh, we have these f's. And then the question is, how do we get, get new grid from these uh, functions f, isn't it? So um, basically how to change 
how to properly change the variable is that in the integration. So basically what we're doing is that we are, we're, we are trying to properly change the variable. And now we have the one dimensional problem. Why is one dimensional problem? Because we, uh, uh, in Vegas algorithm, we use so-called separable ansatz. Once you use a separable ansatz, you transform n dimensional problem into n one dimensional problems. So that, and now we have one dimensional problems, how to get grit from function f, okay? So um, what we said first that we're gonna do is we are, we are gonna normalize this function. Well, actually we already did this. We normalized the function already. Um, so we have this f e twiddles, and now we have for each dimension, we have another f e twiddle and the algorithm to create new grid is written here, okay? So this is how the, the, the change of variable for the integration, this is for one dimensional problem, isn't it? Um, so we need to make sure that, that the function f twiddle contributes the same amount in each interval, isn't it? So we want this thing to be flat. So once more, so the, we, we discussed uh, last time that the proper condition is that this thing is constant. So the value of the function times the Jacobi, it's Jacobian has to be constant, okay? Because this is equivalent to saying that uh, that f twiddle divided by the weight is constant, isn't it? That's what we're what, that's what we're requiring. Now, how do we do that? Well, the algorithm is uh, written here. So first, uh, we uh, once more integrate over uh, the, the the old grid, and we get i. So since the function is normalized, I think this y, i is uh, always one. But just in case, uh, we we are gonna we're gonna carry this out once more. And then uh, we are going to divide this quantity by number of, of bin points, ng, which is number of bin points. And then we require that, uh, that, that, that um, new grid points are such that the contribution to each little new interval is exactly uh, the, the fraction of the integral that each grid point is supposed, supposed to contain. Okay, so now in practice, this to do this thing, it's a bit tricky. So, I mean, it's easy, but you have to understand it. So what, what, what we're doing. So let me try to explain this with this little, um, uh, with this little plot, okay? So imagine, well, all our functions are actually um, um, uh, step function, uh, uh, stepwise constant. So the function, is exactly stepwise, is that so? It has this this shape, okay. Um, so from from grid point to grid point, it's constant. Um, now um, this value i divided by n g is something that we're going to call average per bin, okay. So we need this much this amount of the integral into in each bin. Okay, so let's say that uh, average per bin is uh, equal to this red quantity here, and we need a little bit more than, than the first bin. Okay, so if we needed exactly the first bin, then the new uh, grid point is going to be exactly here, exactly the way the place where the old grid point was, isn't it? So if, for example, this grid, this bin contains exactly average per bin, then it's clear that the new grid point has to be exactly the same place as the old grid point, okay? But let's say that uh, the first grid, the, the first bin doesn't contain enough. So then what we need to do is we need to go to the second bin and we need part of the second bin as well, okay? Well, in this case, the new bin is not gonna be exactly where the old bin was, but it's gonna be somewhere between between the where the old bin was and where the next old bin was, isn't it? Where, where, so it was the old bin uh, of L of L, and this one is the old bin of L plus one, isn't it? So we need to kind of if if we um, you if we need to use half of the next bin as well, then the new grid point has to be somewhere between uh, between um, between this point and between that point. Okay, and we're going to use linear interpolation to determine where exactly this new new bin is. And again, then 
uh, we are going to keep integrating. For example, let's say that the next average per bin is contained in this blue quantity. So uh, whatever is blue here and whatever is blue here. So then we know the next grid point is supposed to be uh, somewhere between this point here and between that point here, isn't it? Between these two, because uh, we know that, uh, that this grid point is too far because we already we need so the the we already have more more than average per bin in this blue uh, shared shared area and we uh, had to give part of the weight to the third bin to the G three isn't it so the the idea is that we we are kind of um, increasing uh, the we're going through the old uh, bins. So this is the beginning. Of course, this is, this is zero. Then this is the, the first, the edge of the first bin. This is the edge of the second bin, the edge of the third bin, the fourth bin. So we're going through the old, uh, old grid points. So this, this is the algorithm. We're, we're looking at the old grid points, G old, DG old, isn't it? We're integrating all the old grid points, but we are integrating the new function F twiddle. Okay, so this this function, the way I think of it, is that this is uh, f twiddle function, isn't it? which we are integrating, and we are looking how much do I need to accumulate in order to get this value, this average value per bin, i or n g. Okay, and once we accumulate enough, we said okay, then I use the linear interpolation to uh, figure out where exactly the new bit, new grid point is. It's going to be somewhere between the new and the somewhere between the two old grid points. Okay, so that's the algorithm. Now, how is this implemented? Well, um, here's the algorithm. Uh, it's under class grid. So uh, the first part in it we already discussed. This in it doesn't do anything but just set uh, g of x is x. Um, and this was discussed last time. Okay, we're not going to go through this. Now the new part is this part, uh, def refine grid. Okay, so this um, algorithm, this uh, code, implements exactly what I was trying to sketch uh, on this plot. Okay, so um, accumulating of these stepwise constant functions. Okay, so. Uh, what do we do? Imp uh, is the input f twiddle. Okay, so imp is basically this f twiddle here uh, that we are going to in, uh, integrate f twiddle, isn't it? And then in addition, we also have the old grid. Okay, the old grid is um, the old grid is uh, is where is basically this self g. Okay. Self G. This is part of the grid, isn't it? It's, it's all grid. Self G. Okay. So what do we do? First, we figure out what, how many dimensions we have and how many bins we have from shape of the function f imp, for example. But there are also other ways you could do it. And then we define. Well, here we um, uh, allocate the memory for new uh, uh, G, uh, which at, at the very end we're going to set self G to be this new G. Of course, we could immediately write, we could be immediately writing into self G uh, when we uh, go through the loop, but this is a bit dangerous. Um, so it's safer to allocate new memory and then at the very end to save it back into into the into GG. Um, just that uh, um, we don't kind of collide um, with with. Um, so it can happen that we are changing the, the, the that we will be changing the grid while we need the old grid still sometimes in, in a step. Okay, so uh, the first thing is that we need to figure out how much do we need per bin. So this quantity per average per bin is, as I uh, uh, discussed in the algorithm, is this um, is this integral divided by number of point number of grid points. Well, kind of, almost. It's almost i divided by ng, uh, except that um, we kind of divide in the left and in the right. We divide by the dh, which is the size of the interval, because 
uh, all these things are proportional. This thing is proportional to the to the dh to the size of the interval because we're doing the integral. And this part is also proportional to the size of dh, so we can skip on both sides size of the dh if we want to. So average per bin then is basically just the sum of all the the uh, all the points, sum of sum of all the grid points. So this is over the sum of the grid points for this dimension divided by number of bins. So this much this is the this is the amount of the weight that we need to accumulate in each. Uh, in each new grid point, okay. So once we once we have once we accumulate average per bin in a new grid point, we know that this is the new this is the place for setting the new grid point, okay. So uh, then what do we do? Uh, well, uh, we are gonna remember two things: current and uh, previous yes how current and previous we're always going to have current and previous and these are the values of grit current and previous value for grit so uh, what would that be so here again current and previous values is basically g old isn't it is g old value of um, basically it's it's at each iteration we have this value x value here g old is this, let's say, and G, G, no, G previous, let's say, is this, and G is then the next grid point. So we're talking about the grid points here, isn't it? The grid points in X direction, okay? Um, now, um, this bin is the amount of weight that we accumulated up to now, okay? So this is basically the value of the, of the integral, current value of the integral. So what do we do? We go over all uh, grid points, um, all but the last bin, which has to be set to one anyway. Um, and then in each grid point, we, we uh, iterate. We have this while loop until um, this bin has less weight than average per bin, okay? So in other words, in this plot, what we do is we accumulate as much weight. Uh, uh, at the first step, we accumulate weight, which I uh, uh, mark here as red. So we accumulate as much weight that it's equal to average per bin, and then we stop. Then in the next iteration, in the, in the next step, we're gonna uh, again accumulate, for example, the, uh, the, blue st the blue stuff here. And let's say that this, is, this becomes equal to average per bin, and we can stop. OK, so this is the while loop over here. So while loop, what is do? So we add to this bin the value of the function. OK, we, we add to this bin the value of the function. And then we, we check here whether this bin now is still less than average per bin. If it's still less than average per bin, we need to go to the next grid point, isn't it? And then we need to repeat this, repeat, repeat, until we realize, whoops, now we have already too much weight. Okay, so when we realize that we have a little bit too much weight, then we know that the new grid point is somewhere between the previous and current grid point. Okay, because previous and current are basically the previous and current G. So basically, every time we see that we accumulated enough weight, so for example, here we accumulated enough weight, uh, uh, red weight, let's say, then we know that the, the grid point is somewhere between the previous and current. And again, when we go with the blue here, we, we see that we accumulate enough weight. So then the, the new grid point is between the, the two um, uh, grid points, uh, uh, the, the two old grid points, okay? So what is the current? The current is, uh, is, is the grid point that correspond to this, the same bin from which we uh, added uh, this function f twiddle to this bin. So we are accumulating to the to the to the function f twiddle. We are accumulating this um, um, f twiddle. So basically, what we are doing here once more, we are uh, we are we are we are integrating this f twiddle on the old grid. Okay, this f twiddle. So the the accumulation of this f twiddle is imp 
Um, and we are adding to this bin, this function imp, and then we are checking what um, grid point from the old grid corresponds to this current value, okay? And um, once this, this while loop, uh, uh, while we, once we break out of this while loop, we know that currently we have a little bit more in this bin than average per bin because we jumped out, okay? We jumped out of this while loop. We know that this bin is either, um, just a second, is either equal or slightly bigger than average per bin. Has to be slightly bigger than average per bin, okay? So then we need to linearly interpolate the value of the new grid to be between current and between uh, previous, okay? With the linear interpolation. So how do we do that? Well, it's, uh, it's current minus delta divided by the value of the function, uh, but delta itself is current minus previous times this bin, okay? So this is actually linear interpolation. Uh, let me try to explain you why is it linear interpolation. So first, um, we subtract from this bin, which is slightly bigger than average per bin, we subtract average per bin. So therefore what we what we're left with is uh, the excess of the weight that we accumulated, the excess, okay? So um, so if I, if I look at this plot here, so when we are, for example, let's say that we are doing the first bin here and we accumulate as much as we need in the red, but of course we took first the, the entire bin and we got not only what we need for the with the red color, but we also got a little, the, the, all the stuff that is in this bin, uh, the blue, which is also the blue on the top. So we, we accumulate all this. And now we subtract average per bin, which is all stuff that is red. So what we're left with is this blue stuff, okay? So we're left with this blue stuff on here, this little, little, little amount. And now we know that if we take the blue stuff here and divide by the value that is in this entire bin, so blue divided by the entire size of the bin, we know that this is where the grid point has to be. So if, if uh, let's say this is exactly at one half, let's say that this blue stuff is exactly one half of the entire bin, then we know that the grid point is, is exactly between the previous and the current, is exactly in the middle. If this um, if the, the, the blue amount here is, let's say, one quarter of the entire uh, bin, then we know that the new grid point has to, be, um, it has to be three quarters away from previous and one quarter away to, from current, okay? So um, this is what's implemented in here. So we subtract from this bin average per bin, we get this excess weight, this blue amount over there that I showed, then uh, we multiply uh, um, we multiply the success weight with current minus previous, and then we divide by the value of the function. Okay, so let's check here for the case when uh, this bin was exactly the same as average per bin. Let's say that we we accumulated just exactly a. a, a weight that was equal to average per bin, then this difference here would result into zero. So basically this bin in this step will become zero. And if in this case, delta becomes zero. And in this case, the new grid point becomes current. Okay, so that's exactly what we need, isn't it? Now, however, if this bin was, uh, was, um, was for the entire value of the function bigger than average per bin, then this bin minus average per bin would become equal to uh, imp in, this, in, in the last grid point, would be equal to the entire value of the function in the, in the last bin. So what would in this case happen? So we will have, we, with delta would become current minus previous times the entire value of the function. We divide by the value of the function and we get, and delta becomes current minus previous. We subtract this from current and we get previous. Uh, is there a question? Is there a question? 
No, I somehow imagined it was not. Going to. Okay, so in other words, I, I'm uh, uh, trying to go too deeply into this this point, but the the, the way you should think of this uh, issue is that uh, we that uh, we have this function imp, which is given uh, in piecewise constant uh, as a piecewise constant function, doesn't it? And we need to integrate this piecewise constant function. Uh, for so long that we get correct weight, that we get this uh, weight, which uh, average weight, isn't it? We, we get uh, we get this average weight that needs to go into each bin, and once we once we accumulate enough weight, we need to put the new grid point somewhere between the between the uh, we use linear interpolation to put the grid point in the right place. Okay, so this is what this part of the algorithm does. Um, yeah, so once we set the new grid point to right value, then the rest is trivial. So we, uh, the, uh, the uh, n bin minus one grid point has to always be equal to one. And we set, actually, we set it, the new grid of n bins, the very last, last point uh, has to be always set to zero. And it is because uh, here we, uh, uh, yeah, so what do we see it? Yeah, because we, uh, Actually, we don't see it here. So this new grid point has only n bin points, but G nu has actually n bin plus one point. So basically, in G nu, um, we set we always set only n bin points, but G nu actually um, uh, contains n bin points plus one. So the last point is actually always zero. Uh, that's what we need for kind of um, have more to have more convenient linear interpolation in the in the uh, Vegas algorithm. Okay, and once, once we uh, accumulate this G nu, we set G nu to be self G, and then we um, uh, return this uh, new uh, uh, new grid. Okay, so uh, I'm going to evaluate this, and uh, now in this um, step, I'm going to show what happens when we use uh, as an input, we're using this uh, this functions that you see here. So these functions, uh, the, the, the uh, in these three dimensions, you see this function has a little bit uh, access. Well, has a bit the best, the most weight at the beginning and at the end. And then, what is the corresponding uh, redefined grid? So this is done in this step. Um, so we are gonna we're gonna start here from scratch. Basically, uh, we are gonna make. Um, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So 200 million, two, no, 200,000 iter, uh, iterations, 200,000 200, uh, random points we're going to throw into the volume. Um, we are going to initialize the cumulants. We're going to use 128 uh, uh, grid points. Um, and then uh, we initialize here the grid points first. Then we uh, Use this Vegas algorithm, the Vegas current Vegas algorithm, to create um, pro these projections of these functions, this f twiddles uh, that we had before, but we are redefining them. Then we are smoothening them, just like we did before. And then this is the new step. We use this refined grid method to redefine the grid. And then we're going to plot the new grid and we're going to look at it, see how how it looks like now. Okay. So let me evaluate this. Aha, uh -huh. and this is what we get as a grid points. So every time that I evaluate this function, I get slightly different grid points because I have slightly different uh, set of random, random numbers. But the point is that if the function is very, very spiky uh, at, the, at the edge, then we know that the new grid will rise very slowly uh, at the edge. So basically wherever the uh, value of the function is very large, the grid should not change much, isn't it? The grid should be very, very slow function. And then where the value of the function is small, then the, the, the grid changes very fast, isn't it? So that's kind of, you can think of it as the natural grid for representing such a function, isn't it? So again, where the function is very, very steep, you need grid, which is uh, flat, where the function uh, uh, doesn't contain much weight, then the grid can be pretty uh, 
pretty, uh, pretty um, uh, can change very, very quickly. And it always needs to go between zero and one. So value of zero is zero, the last value is equal to one. Okay, so basically we have everything that we need. We know now how to redefine the grid. And now it's final moment to put everything together in the Vegas algorithm. And this is gonna be done in uh, Vega step three. So what do we do in Vega step three? Well, we just iterate this algorithm that we uh, discussed up to now several times, that's all. So what is new in, in this step? So everything up to here is exactly the same as was before. The new loop is this one, four iter in range thousand. So this is a new inserted loop over number of iterations. So we are doing several iterations up to 1000 iterations, but hopefully we never need thousand iterations. We are gonna break out of the uh, loop once we accumulate enough number of, um, uh, number of uh, function evaluations, isn't that? Because the important thing is that we are counting how many number of evaluations we do every time, okay? So we have this outside loop. That's the new thing. The rest is the same. So <clears throat> this is the uh, the, the weight uh, the weight function, uh, which you remember is basically a product of Jacobians times one over n. Fx bin, as you remember, is this uh, projection <coughs> of the function to all the axes that's going to be used to uh, redefine the grid. And then we iterate over all uh, uh, function evaluations in this iteration, as that. So this is uh, uh, the major loop over all function evaluations in this particular iteration. And as, we, as you remember from last time, um, we are gonna do this function evaluations not one by one, but in batches of n, which is usually uh, at the number of the order of thousand. So n batch is the order of thousand. So what do we do first? We generate uh, a random number, uh, but not just one, but n number of dimensions of random numbers, the number of uh, batches that we are gonna do it at once. So it's a two dimensional array of random numbers. So all this is the same as before. So I'm just repeating it, but nothing has been changed. So then once we have these random numbers, we decided to make uh, these two, two loops uh, over a number of batches and over the dimensions. And then here, we just evaluate uh, the grid points at all these random numbers. And we, uh, uh, we also accumulate the weight, which is basically the Jacobian for that uh, current grid points. So once more, what we do in this in this step is uh, we are um, we are we are evaluating these functions g at the right uh, at the grid current grid points at the at the, uh, uh, at the random numbers x which are which which are being uh, generated, and then at the same time we are also uh, calculating uh, these weights, dg1 or dgx, dg2 or dgy, dg3 or dgz. So these, these things are done here. Um, yeah, so then um, we kind of store uh, this weight, which is the uh, the f of dx, the f of dy, the f of dz and so on. Uh, and then once we, then XR actually contains now G of X, isn't that? G of X, uh, G1 of X, G2 of Y, G3 of Z and so on. And then we have to, uh, we have to uh, evaluate the function, the function, the user function. This is the function that we actually integrate on all those uh, values of the grid functions, isn't that? So basically what we're doing is we are evaluating here f of g1, g2, g3, uh, But again, this is not new. This is exactly the same as we, as we had before. There's nothing new in this step. Um, so then we remember how many functional relations uh, we have done up to now. And then we start to uh, accumulate uh, certain weights. Um, 
so uh, first we multiply the value of the function times the weights, uh, which is basically, um, this is basically, uh, yeah, this is this. So value of the function times the weights and we sum over this and this is uh, stored into cum, uh, cum sum, is it? So the step here, cum sum, uh, contains uh, sum of all the weights. Uh, then we square this function and then uh, we sum all the squares of the function in cum sq sum. So uh, basically uh, to remind you, so we are squaring the function, you see there's a square here, okay? We are squaring the function and then we accumulate into something that we call sq sum. Now there is this little trick that uh, there is an extra n here uh, because we square the we square the entire thing and we, we have then one over n equivalent to one over n square. That's a tiny little uh, detail. Um, then, um, uh, yeah, so up to now, everything was exactly the same as in the old um, step. Now this one is new. No, actually, no, this one was new in previous step. Sorry, this is still not, still not, um, uh, this was new before in step two, uh, which is that we now remember the, uh, the projections of this function on all the, uh, on all the uh, uh, axes. So uh, what is that? This is uh, uh, remembering the function on all the axes which is this. So we are remembering fx bin of one, fx bin of two, xx bin of three as this partial sum over all but this dimension, is that? So we are squaring the function, as you can see, we squared the entire thing. And we are remembering the projection to this dimension. So this is done in this part. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, Again, here is just doing the statistics pretty much. I mean, we discussed this already. So we are computing one over sigma square, and then we are uh, uh, remembering uh, the value of the function divided by sigma square and calculate the best possible, uh, best possible uh, approximation for the integral up to now. So remember, we are doing this uh, f, uh, uh, value of the uh, average of the function divided by sigma square. We also do one over sigma square, and then we calculate the best approximation up to now in this algorithm in this way. Uh, so these are these these uh, few steps. And now finally, this is what's new. Uh, well, this is what's new, and this is what's new. So these just a second. These these few steps. Okay, this this, this is new. Yeah. So this stuff is new. So what do we do? Um, well, if uh, we if we are uh, beyond the first iteration, then we can calculate the chi square because if we if this is iteration zero, then chi square is actually infinite. So, uh, but if if uh, the iteration is more than one, then the chi square is finite, and basically we calculate it in this formula. So here you see if the iteration if m is equal to one, then we have one minus one, which is zero. So we basically have. Uh, uh, zero divided by zero, which is uh, which is in the in the term. But if iteration is more than one, then we can evaluate this function, this chi square, um, evaluated this way. So we we have this average of f, the current uh, in the current iteration. We know what is f f uh, average f. We know what is average i best. We know what is sigma square. So this is very easy to implement. All the ingredients are there. So that's what we do in this step. So it's really trivial, exactly implementing this function, this uh, this um, uh, chi square that was that that I uh, write in the notes. Uh, then we print out a few things here. Um, so basically, what we print is the value, current value of the of the integral. Yeah, cum average times the, the uh, times the dimension to the times unit to the dimensions. Is basically the current value of the integral. Cum error is the current error of the integral. Then we print the chi the chi square. So basically, how um, uh, how um, 
uh, chi-square measures uh, how much trust we have into this in, into this value, and then uh, and then we print the number of current number of function evaluations. So uh, and here is the new part. Basically, uh, we smoothen the we smoothen the the uh, this function that was binned. So fx bin again to remind you we bint it here in this step where we when we so save the projection of the function to all the the um, axis so uh, we are now smoothing it just like we discussed before then we redefine the grid just like we discussed before and this is it so we have a new grid now okay the only thing that we still need to do here is to clear out the partial sums from previous iteration. Why? Well, because um, this cum sum and cum sq sum needs to be, uh, so basically this cum sum here and cum sq sum, this has to be average within this iteration. And this f square has to be average within this iteration. So here we have this i here, which means it's the value of it's the average in this particular iteration and we have several iterations okay and then we also need well sigma square is being calculated from this sq sum and, uh, and s uh, cum s sum so basically we set them to zero because this is this is a partial sum at this iteration so the next iteration starts from scratch and then finally uh, we uh, remember how many no, actually, we uh, uh, increase a little bit of how many points we are going to evaluate every time with any increase. So basically, we said that we start with some number of um, uh, functional evaluations. I don't know, maybe 10,000 to the first iteration. And then at each, at each iteration, we are going to increase the number of point, the number of uh, necessary steps or number of functional evaluations a little bit. Uh, and uh, then we are always going to check if the total number of function evaluations is bigger than the maximum that the user gave us, then we stop the iterations. So then the, the whole thing, the, the uh, algorithm can stop. But if the uh, number of total number of function evaluations is not that big yet, then we need to do one more iteration or a few more iterations. Okay, that's it. And then at the very end, when we jump out of the loops, uh, we just um, uh, uh, multiply the average and the error with the volume. This is unit to the power of n dim is actually exactly the value of the, vo the, the, the volume of the hypercube. Um, and uh, this is now finally the, 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 the con uh, final uh, value of the integral and the final value of the error. Okay, so that's all. This is this is this is this is an entire biggest algorithm. So I'm going to evaluate this, and now we can see uh, what Vegas does. You see iteration one, iteration two, iteration three, iteration four, and so on. We know that the value, the exact value of the interval is the integral is 1.3932, and uh, we start with 1.367, then we go to 1.383, 1.389. So it's not perfect, but you see, it's improving with number of number of steps and iterations. One point three nine three two. The last value was one point three nine two seven, which is one close to one point three nine three, isn't it? And we have the error bar here, um, uh, which corresponds to roughly the right thing. So it's ten to the minus three, which is which is indeed uh, this two could also be three. Yeah, and that's a, that's exactly the right thing. One point three nine three two. Okay, so the estimated error is indeed within the error of the exact value that we know. Um, and chi square uh, is of the order of one, which means that we can trust the result. Uh, and the final number of evaluations was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so it's 2 million, I guess. We were asking here for how many? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We asked for 2 million, yes. And uh, hmm. it seems we valid even more than 2 million. So a little bit more than 2 million. 
Yeah, I get, uh -huh, okay. So basically we, uh, we always check whether we, uh, whether we uh, have made already 2 million evaluations. And I guess in this step, there was not enough, there was not 2 million yet. And then we made one more step and then here it was already exceeding 2 million and then we ex exited. So basically when we ask for 2 million, we might not have exactly 2 million, but we have a little bit more than 2 million because we, we, we had to do one more step. Uh, yeah, so basically uh, this is it. So uh, we can plot now the fine, we also plot at the end the final grid and you see that the final grid is actually very, uh, uh, very smooth and beautiful. So we have the, we have um, the, the grid which is um, pretty flat at the beginning and at the end of the integral. Uh, why? Because we know that the beginning and at the end there are the, those large uh, poles or these peaks that the function contains singularities. And in the center, um, the grid points are, um, are uh, uh, so the grid is steeper because we don't have so much weight. Okay, so um, this is uh, uh, self-consistent evaluation of the Vegas algorithm. And now um, I wanted to give you the homework. Um, here is the homework. Uh, if, you, uh, uh, if you download from either our uh, webpage, uh, so if you download from our webpage, Jupyter Notebook for Vegas algorithm, or if you uh, go to the GitHub and download from there, in both cases, you will get this new version of the Vegas 2021, uh, which contains the homework. Uh, now, one of the questions in the homework was to uh, speed up um, the, well, actually, first I wanted to give you homework that you speed up the entire Vegas algorithm. And then I realized that actually this is quite hard. Um, and therefore I decided to do it as part of the, Mm, part of the algorithm development. So I'm going to show you here and you're going to have it in your notebook. The, it's going to be v called Vegas step 3B. Okay, Vegas step 3B is um, already, um, let's say, uh, improved or speed up uh, algorithm of Vegas. Um, let me demonstrate uh, that this much, much faster. So, um, uh, remember, this is the speed of the original uh, Vegas. One, two, three, now we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so now identical algorithm, but it's not. Um, the, the, there are still some things that you that you are going to be asked to speed up in the in the homework, but most of the critical parts are already uh, uh, addressed. And you see the speed now, woo, fifteen done. See, so all the fifteen iterations were done faster than a single iteration before. Okay, once more, if I evaluate this. Whoop, fifth iteration is done. Okay, so you see what a big difference. And now in the homework, we can do it even faster. It can be even one order of magnitude faster than that. But uh, let's first discuss how do we go from the slow algorithm, Vega step three to Vega step three B. So what did we have to do? Well, uh, there are basically two, two slow steps. Um, in Vega step three. So um, we discussed before that in order to make algorithm fast, we are doing all the evaluations in batches, in batches of thousand. Okay. Um, the the idea is that uh, uh, this step, uh, this this batch evaluation of thousand function evaluations, is not supposed to be done in Fortran, but it's supposed to be done in some lower level uh, library like NumPy or maybe in Numba or something. 
So we should not have in our algorithm a uh, loop over n batch. Okay. Once we get rid of the loop over n batch, we are already done. We, we've done pretty pretty well. We the, the algorithm is then much much harder to speed up. So um, now let's see where do we iterate over n batch. Well, uh, this loop here for i in range n. Okay. This is a long loop and it takes a long time. So we need to do this part somehow in a vector form. So this part we shouldn't iterate over n. We should remove this uh, for, for loop for i in range of n. We have to get rid of it somehow. That's one part. And then the other part, which is also slow, is this part. Uh, fx bin. So again, we have here for i in range of n. It's another uh, loop over n for over n batch. And then there is the third one, which is basically refine the grid. This one I'm not going to do yet. I'm going to ask you to do this in, uh, at home. So def refine grid, this part. This also goes over all uh, grid points. I mean, it's not as bad as iterating over all n's because the number of grid points is a little over 128 or something. And the number of batch points is a little over 1,000. So this is not so crucial, but it's useful to speed up nevertheless. But what is really crucial here is to get rid of this uh, uh, do loop over n here. This is the most important one. The most important loop is this. And then the second loop is this for i in range of n. These are the two loops that we need to get rid of. So how do we do that? Well, of course, there are many ways. One is to completely rewrite this loop into Fortran or C, but that's kind of ugly. Um, the other is to use Numba, but again, I didn't kind of do that. So the, the simplest idea is to make this more Pythonic-like, okay? Pythonic. So what does it mean? It means that we should use, um, we should not, uh, rather than iterating over n, we should just work with arrays, uh, vectorizing. I mean, the vectorizing the calls, which we could use a num numpy functionality that it can do something on the entire array, isn't that? So basically, uh, typical exam example is this. You see, we are doing, uh, we're multiplying xr of i times dim times n bins, and then we take the integer value of this pos. Pos here is just one number, okay? But we can, of course, do, for example, this is trivial to do on the entire array. Uh, so instead of iterating over all i for range n, we can just do this on the entire array. That's completely trivial to do. Now, of course, the second point is a little bit harder, but still, it's not so hard. We need to take i pos and i pos minus one. So what is i pos and i pos minus one? Basically, we're taking gi minus gi minus one. Okay, this is gi, gi minus one, actually. It's not g minus one, but gi, gi minus one. So we're taking grid of dim i pos minus grid of dim i pos minus one. So how do we do that? Well, look, if this i pos is not just one integer, but it's an array of integers, an array of integers, isn't it? Because what we are, we are gonna get rid of this loop for i in range of n, that's the idea. You get rid of this loop. And so we work with uh, n with array of the size of n, okay? So instead of having the loop here, we are loop over for i in range of n, we are gonna work with the entire array of values from one to n or from zero to n minus one. So uh, pos is such an array, okay? Pos will be such an array from one to n from now on. I pos will be such an array, okay? And then we need to evaluate this step here, g at i pos minus g at i pos minus one. So how do we do that in Python? Well, if you remember our introductory to uh, NumPy, we mentioned something like fancy indexing. Okay, you remember fancy indexing? Okay, so 
Basically, this is exactly what fancy indexing does. You have an array of values, IPOS, which is an integer array, and you can evaluate another array on uh, not at one index, but at an array of indices. This is called fancy indexing. And then you need another array of I plus minus one. We evaluate on this fancy index and we get an entire array of diffs rather than one diff for one value. We get an entire array of diffs. And once we get an entire array of diffs, uh, we, can, we can do this step as well for the entire array. And then this step here is completely trivial. And then we can do the entire weight for the entire array. Okay, so let me show you how is this done actually. Uh, yeah, so look, this loop here is identical to the previous loop. I checked one to one, it's exactly identical, and exactly the same input, it gives you exactly the same output, but it doesn't have the loop over n. You see, there is no loop over from i range of n because we are working with the entire arrays. So we start with XR, XR, which is, this is exactly the same before. It's a two-dimensional two array over N, then is N dim. So the, the first dimension is N. And so this first dimension of XR is what we're going to work with. Everything is, become, is going to become array uh, over N, at least. Uh, so then First, we, we, we create this POS, which is XR times N bins. But mode, notice that this POS is now two-dimensional array. Uh, then this bins can be immediately, uh, uh, can be immediately uh, vectorized. So we can immediately calculate bins from knowing the POS because this is a truncation of, the, uh, of, the, of this um, uh, POS to the integer value. So let me show you uh, the step up here. So you see beans was here called IPOS, but IPOS is never nothing else but just truncation of the of the POS, which is XR of phi D times N beans. Uh, so it's basically uh, taking the floor or take, taking the integer value of this floating point number of XR times N beans. So basically we can we can evaluate this XR times n beans as a two-dimensional array, okay? Then we take the integer value of this two-dimensional array and we can immediately set it into beans, the integer value of the, of the array. So basically this beans can be done without any loop, not over dimension nor over, over, uh, over um, uh, batch, okay? So this is what we're doing here. So we, we, we do the spos for the entire array, uh, and then we immediately set uh, beans as the integer value of this two-dimensional array. So the way you do this is that you create a new array from the existing floating point array, pos. We create a new array, which has to contain integers. And then this is kind of typecasting to integer array. And we created immediately the two-dimensional array of bins. Um, okay, so we have these bins now. Uh, now we need to calculate the weights, VG, VGH. So basically, remember the weights before? How did we do it? Uh, well, we first said that each weight is one or all n samples, and then weight was here the product of all uh the jacobians so basically diff was gi minus gi minus one yeah so diff is gi minus gi minus one uh times n bins because basically n bins is like for one over dh isn't it so basically this is jacobian so we multiply all the jacobians so how do we do that uh in a vector form uh well uh we we will still have the loop over dimensions but no loop over n so when we have loop over dimensions, we can take, so now we are using fancy indexing. Okay, where is the fancy indexing? Here, okay? So we are taking the grid points 
at particular dimension, but at the beans, uh, the, the, at the beans which are uh, which are an array of values. So you see these beans here. Uh, we are taking um, we are taking beans for that correspond to this particular dimension, and we take an array of them, and then we use the fancy in the indexing to get the grid point GI for the entire array, for the entire batch, okay? So this GI is now the value, uh, is basically GI for the entire batch, okay? And now, see, in this step, we are creating another array of beans minus one, and then we are relating grid on the entire batch. Okay, so this is again the entire batch is done in, at once. This is Pythonic like, isn't it? You do you vectorize the entire call with uh, using NumPy. So basically, this this GM now is this G I minus one done for an entire batch at once. And then, uh, well, once we have G I and G I minus one, then it's easy to calculate the diff for an entire batch. Again, this is now array of uh, of thousand values. Um, and uh, once we have this gi g minus one and diff, then it's very easy to calculate the linear interpolation uh, between uh, gi and gmi minus one, uh, uh, which corresponds to you know linear interpolation of the function. So this is basically g of x. Yeah, linear interpolation for g of x. Uh, and then we know that uh, we well here in the next step we we set uh, G of X R to be equal to G of uh, to, to be equal to X R. So basically, because later on we're going to use this this to do function evaluation. So that so here we are relating function on X R, which actually is, is, is G of X. Okay. So um, yeah, and then the only thing that we, uh, we 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 need to make sure is that we. Um, uh, that we multiply that no that we save Jacobian. So Jacobian actually is just diff times n bins. So again, diff now is an array over the entire batch of thousand points, an array of thousand, a size of thousand, and then we multiply this with n bins, and we get still array of thousand points, and uh, we uh, make sure. At the very beginning, this weight is equal to one divided by n samples. Okay, so this at the beginning we set weight, weight to be ones of n batch, which is like one, 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 or uh, thousand of those, is the thousand, thousand ones divided by uh, n samples or one over n, and then we multiply uh, with Jacobian from each. Uh, from each uh, dimension, isn't it? Um, and well, this is exactly the weight. So this loop here, you see, it's exactly the same. Does exactly the same thing as the previous loop, with the only difference is that we are wait, we are working here now with the arrays of the order of uh, batch size. Okay, so uh, arrays of the size of thousand. So naively you would say, well, before we were doing. With in, with uh, with uh, just one number at a time, um, and the code was kind of slow. But now we are working with thousand numbers at a time, and the code is much faster. But uh, in Python, that's indeed the, indeed the case because we are using functionality of um, NumPy, which is written in a low-level uh, C uh, uh, C uh, language. Okay, so whenever you can get rid of a large long loop over um, certain variable, you're gaining a lot of speed because then this is done. These these vectorized calls are all uh, done in a lower level language. In C, you would actually lose speed by doing it this way. So if you do this, the same vectorized algorithm uh, in C, this would be much slower than uh, than the than the for loop actually. But in, in Python, this is the way you should do it. Okay, so we speed up already this part. I think that it's good enough. Um, 
The only thing that we want to also speed up is uh, is the simplest part, which is the, 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 the other part, which is this. So when we uh, set, um, when we set, uh, the, we, we calculate this F square projection of the function uh, to all the axes, and then we just want to save it, okay? Save it into the proper bin. So uh, this, you cannot do with fancy indexing. So I made a mistake and I uh, kind of assumed, well, we know the bins here. We know um, uh, naively you would say that, well, okay, this call can easily be vectorized uh, because uh, bins can become, um, can become a vector over this index i here, isn't it? And v fun is a vector over i, and well, I can write this call as a with fancy indexing with uh, with this uh, removing this i here and removing this i here, and it's gonna be it's gonna work in a vector form, but it does not. Uh, I mean, the code works, but it doesn't produce the right result. So, do you have any idea why? Is any anybody following? Are you lost? Lost? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, well, basically, the, the, this step is relatively simple. All we are doing is we are um, we are saving. So what we're doing is this. So we're saving into fx bin sum over y and z, but we are summing over y and z, but we are not summing over x, okay? So the trouble here is that when you do something like that, uh, we are basically doing something like f1 of x, uh, and we are going, going, going over all x values. And then we are, we're going to go all x, all y on all z. And then we are adding f1 of x plus equal something, which is being evaluated. And at the same time, we, we say f2 of y plus equal something. So the trouble is the following. Um, the trouble is that, uh, that this means can have the same value multiple times. It's not unique. Bins is not unique. So this value, this, this number bins here uh, can be, let's say, value 70, 10 times. Can be. So which means that this plus equal is gonna, in, we were gonna add to the same bin, let's say bin number 70, many, many times this value v fun of i. And if we do this a vector, in a vectorized way, it's gonna, be hap it's gonna happen only once. So the trouble is that these fancy indexing works when there is one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, this, this bin so phi and i. So basically if this bin so phi would be, uh, just permutation of range of i, this would work, okay? So if bins of i would, would contain numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to n dim, but just uh, 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 they would just be sorted in a different way, okay? So then this uh, loop would work with fancy indexing. However, if those bins are not simply reordered numbers from zero to n, but some numbers, they are gonna appear multiple times and some numbers never. So let's say that the bins of i e dim is always zero. Let's say that all of bins of i and e dim are zero because all the bit point, bit, uh, grid points 
uh, would accidentally appear at zero, then uh, the, 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 uh, the first grid point would contain all the weight, okay? And so when we iterate over i, all the function values will, will accumulate in one single grid point, okay? And when we use this fancy indexing, fancy indexing will not do that, okay? So the point is that this loop, what I wanted to explain here is that this loop, because of this plus equal here, and because bins is not uh, is not just simply um, uh, uh, simple uh, uh, simple resorting of uh, uh, numbers between uh, between zero and n minus one, we cannot use fancy indexing. Okay, so but we can use numba. So the, the idea is very simple. So we we write another function, a new function, which I'm going to call set fx bin, uh, which contains exactly the same two, two do loops for dim in range and dim and for i in range of n. And it sets fx bin to uh, v fun of i. So here I write absolute value. You might think of okay, why did I do absolute value? Well, because I have in mind the homework. Homework requires um, complex functions. So when you have a complex, complex function, this is a good idea to be absolute value. Um, so, um, but in this step, we don't need absolute value. It could be just uh, be fun. Uh, so, but, but basically this, this step is exactly the same as what we had before, okay? Except that we wrote a new function. Why did you write a new function? Well, because this new function, this little function, can be uh, speed up by Numba. Well, the entire Vegas, we will never be able to speed up with Numba. I mean, there is no way. There's just too complicated. Numba would protest. Okay. So the, the, the idea is the following. We uh, split up the, the code into smaller steps. And in particular, this step that goes over all the bin points, which is very slow. We write a new function that does only that part and then we can uh, we apply numba on it okay uh, so now we're going to use set fx bin wherever the previous code was so you see here uh, uh, so we'll use this set fx bin yeah here set fx bin you see so the, this was the previous code which i now um uh, comment it out, and instead of this, I just set fx bin, but this one is now speed up by numba. Okay, and the other difference is that here, this, uh, this, the, all these calls are vectorized so that we don't have loop over n. That's all. So these are the two steps that were done, and as you can see, the speed of the Vegas algorithm uh, in Python is uh, several times faster than before but it produces exactly the same result. Okay, so um, it's already 6.20. Um, I'm gonna very quickly uh, tell you about the homework. I'm not gonna give you yet. So I guess I'm gonna give you next time. And I'm gonna also solve the homework next time uh, in uh, here in class, but then you're gonna do it yourself. So, but let me very quickly explain what the homework is. So the first step is to generalize Vegas algorithm so that the integration limits are given by arbitrary numbers from A to B. You can still assume super cube in which all dimensions have the same limit. So right now, our, dimension, our limits were from zero to unit, okay? Basically zero to pi. Um, and uh, this is useful sometimes, but sometimes you need some other limits. I mean, most of the time we need some other limits. So we are not going to do the, the most general case where you, when each dimension can have um, its own limit, but we are going to generate, we're going to generalize it only to the case where each dimensions go from A to B, let's say from minus pi to pi. Okay. So let's say that instead of from zero to pi, you go from minus pi to pi. So uh, A is a number, B is a number. So that's the first step. And that's actually very simple. I will show you that's, that's completely trivial to do. 
Then um, just one line, as far as I remember. Then the next one, the next step is test this Vegas algorithm on the same function that we would used up to now. But instead of you using uh, limits from zero to pi, you're going to use limits from minus pi to pi. Okay, so that means that the integral is going to be uh, eight times bigger because the function is symmetric. Okay, so uh, we have three dimensions, so two to the power of, of three is eight, so it's eight times bigger function, but uh, it should give you the same the same result. So that's simple. The next one, next part is speed up the part of the code that redefines the grid, refine grid. So basically, this part here, refine grid. Uh, that we wrote is somewhat slow because as I was arguing here, uh, we are um, we have this long loop over grid points and grid points is kind of 100 points, a bit large. So what I decided to do is to use Numba in here. Now, as far as I remember, I couldn't use Numba inside the class because uh, actually it turns out that this uh, uh, support, Numba support for class is pretty limited. I mean, I tested it and couldn't make it work. But what you can easily do is uh, create a new function which contains almost the entire algorithm, basically entire algorithm, and then just uh, do things in a normal function, apply Numba on top of it, and then call this function inside the class. Okay, it's easy to do. I will show you the, the solution next time. But I think it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. So that will ultimately improve the speed a lot. So basically, uh, the Vegas algorithm is going to become pretty fast. And then finally, we generalize Vegas to so that it works not only with real numbers but also complex numbers, because there's nothing particularly different with real numbers and complex numbers. I mean, we can easily integrate complex quantities if we want to. And then to test this thing, I would like you to use Vegas algorithm to evaluate so-called Linkhart function. So this is so-called polarization of the uniform electron gas or polarization of the uh, uh, simple model of electrons. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, this is, the, this is the physical expression, okay? So these Fs here are the Fermi functions. Uh, epsilon k is basically just k square minus k Fermi square. Okay, so this the dispersion is just non interacting dispersion, isn't it? Non interacting dispersion in units where mass is one. Uh, 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 actually, mass is uh, k square root 2m, mass is one half. Actually, this is the most convenient unit where the dispersion is just k square, but we need to subtract kf square because the, the, the uh, kf is the Fermi momentum. Um, and uh, yeah, basically we can calculate this polarization for all omegas and for all Qs if we want to. Now, for the first part of the homework, I'm gonna just you ask you to do this integration for one omega of Q and one omega of omega. So uh, value of omega is gonna be zero and value of Q is gonna be 0.1 kf, okay? Why? Because, well, then you can use basically the same Vegas algorithm that we used before. So it's just three-dimensional integral for one omega for one q. Should be easy, okay? Um, now, uh, yeah, in this case, we know roughly what the integral is supposed to be. But then I'm going to give you an optional homework, in which case you're going to calculate not only one value for omega is equal to zero, but for uh, a range of omegas, basically for several omega, for 200 values of omegas, okay? Uh, but I want you to do this for 200 values of omegas at the same time. So in other words, this is gonna have one more, uh, one, the arrays are not gonna be uh, just arrays over, uh, over n values of in the batch, but it's gonna be over n values in the batch and over all omegas. So in other words, all these arrays inside the Vegas algorithm are gonna have one more dimension, which is gonna be over omega, over frequency, okay? Uh, why? Because this is way more, way faster than doing 200 integrals. I mean, doing 200 integrals, integrals will be very, very slow. But doing 200 integrals at the same time is actually not that slow. You will see that it's pretty fast. It's almost the same speed as doing one integral. Okay, maybe a little bit slower, but it's you can get almost all, all a frequency for free. 
rather than one. You can get thousands of them. Um, so that's what we're going to do next time. Uh, we're going to solve the homework, and uh, then you can then you will have it for for uh, yeah, uh, I guess for one week after that. Uh, yeah, sorry that I took way too much time, uh, 26. So if there is any urgent question, you can keep here. You can stay here and ask me. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here. Any question? Yeah, thank you. Any question? Oh, I have a question. Yes. So we don't need to turn in anything on Wednesday, right? No, no, no. no. Okay, good. <laughs> on yeah. Wednesday, I'm going to give you the homework, and then next Wednesday is going to be homework. homework is going to okay, be. okay, I see. Thank you. Yeah. Just relax.